From Hollywood, the George Burns and Gracie Allen Show for Hormel and Spam. Crazy people. Spam, Reba, Boom, Spam. George Burns and Gracie Allen. On the show where there's orchestra For singing glee with a smoothie street Last but not least in With Bud Heaston night again with George Burns and Gracie Allen bringing a big load of fun and a suggestion about how to answer your husband when he calls up and says, I'm bringing the boss home for dinner. Now, don't worry and get yourself in a daze. Serve spam and your good man may get a raise. Of course, we can't promise that, but we can guarantee that when you include spam, cold or hot, you serve a meal that hits the spot. He-Man appetites say spam is great. Family or guests like the satisfying flavor, the grand tasting goodness of this delicious meat. That's why Spam, the original meat of its kind in America, is by far the number one choice of housewives today. Try this tender, juicy meat. Use the easy recipes on the label of the Spam can. When you shop tomorrow, be sure to say to your food dealer, I want Spam. We find George and Gracie about to leave for the courthouse where Elsie Tralifast, the girl whom George promised to put on the radio, is suing him for $200,000 for breach of contract. And here they are, George and Gracie. Gracie, before we leave for the courthouse, it's very important that you get this right. Now, I'll try again for the 50th time. Now, you're on the witness stand, and I'll pretend I'm the attorney. Now, you're going to be my character witness. What's that? What's that? Yeah. A character witness is someone who would say you're nice, you're sweet, you're charming, adorable. George. What? I was out with a character witness last night. <laughs> I better re- I better reword this whole thing. Look, Gracie, if I were your character witness, I'd say you were kind, considerate, in fact, a lovely girl. Oh, now I get it. Good. Now we'll try again. Miss Allen, what do you think of George Burns? He's kind, considerate, in fact, a lovely girl. <laughs> Gracie, I'm not a lovely girl. Have you tried washing your undies in luck? <laughs> Gracie, for instance, if someone got up and said Mr. Burns is a straightforward, sincere, hard-working, industrious man, a credit to his community, what would that be? A paid political announcement. <laughs> Bud, will you show Gracie what you're going to say when you're called as my character witness? Uh, certainly, George. I'll say George Burns is good, fine, and wholesome, just like Spam. He's loved by young and old, just like Spam. People enjoy him at picnics and parties, just like Spam. As a matter of fact, they are alike in all respects but one. Spam doesn't need refrigeration. (laughs) Thanks, Bud, but uh, that's a nice TL for me, but I don't need refrigeration either. No? Then why does everybody say that you're going to be in the cooler? (laughs) Gracie, it's very important that you know what a character witness is. It's someone who knows me personally and gets up and tells the jury what they know about me. Uh, Senor Burns, I shall be most happy to be a character witness for my friend who I've known for a long distance. <laughs> well, thanks, Senor Lee. Now, what would you say about me? Pues tendré que decir la verdad, ¿verdad? Como soy un hombre muy honrado, me veré obligado that's, a decir... Uh, that's que very, que very que... nice, Senor Lee. But uh, why don't you say what you know about me in English? You want to lose the case? <laughs> well, I can see Elsie Tralafaz spending my $200,000 right now. George, your car's waiting downstairs. We'd better start for court. Well, thanks, Artie. Oh, uh, by the way, Artie, will you tell Gracie what you're going to say when you're on the stand as my character witness? Oh, sure. I know George Burns, and I've been with him for a long time. We've never had a contract. His word is his bond. And I might add that I only wish that I were half the man that he is. See, Gracie? Boy, the things I have to say to hold this job. 
that's nice gratitude. Why, Artie, when I first met you, you were a spencer, and I changed you. You thought of nothing but running around and having a good time, and I changed you. What were you when I first picked you up? Huh, a baby. And he changed you. <laughs> oh, quiet. What do you think, this is a joke? I don't know, it got a laugh. <laughs> I wonder if Elsie Trallifass is having this kind of trouble. George, I'm surprised that lawyer isn't here yet. Oh, by the way, Gracie, are you sure that lawyer you hired for me is all right? Well, he handled my uncle's divorce case and settled the whole thing in one day. How did your uncle make out? Well, he got the custody of his wife's parents. <laughs> Gracie, I've got a TL for you. I'm not going to use that lawyer. I'm going to defend my own case. Everything happens to me. Mr. Burns. What is it, Mr. Soundman? Nothing happens to you. A famous psychologist once took two newborn babies, of which I was one, brought me up scientifically and allowed the other baby to follow his natural inclinations without any restraining influences. While I was learning Greek, ornithology, higher mathematics, and diction, the other boy played marbles, cops, and robbers, and spoke through the side of his mouth. That was many years ago. We're both men now. His name is James Cagney, making $10,000 a week, and this is what I do for a living. <laughs> Don't be so envious, sound man. After all, what James Cagney got? All day long, he sits in the stuffy studio under those hot, hot lights, kissing Ann Sheridan. Should happen to me. <laughs> How can I be so witty with a lawsuit staring me in the face? You know, that's cute about James Cagney, but I know another success story. It's about a girl who was very poor. Then one day, out of the clear blue sky, her whole life changed, and now she's going to have all the money she needs to buy all the nice things that she dreamed about. Oh, that's a wonderful story, Gracie. Who's the girl? Her name is Elsie Trollifast. Elsie Trollifast? <laughs> Come on. Come, everybody. Let's get into the car. We'll never get to the court. Smoothies. Take it. You ask me why I'm always teasing you. You hate to have me call you pretty baby. I really thought that I was pleasing you. Or you're just a baby to me. Your cunning little dimples and your baby's fair. Your baby talking, baby walking, curly hair. Your baby smile makes life worthwhile. You're just as sweet as you can be. Everybody loves a baby, that's why I'm in love with you. Pretty baby, pretty baby. And I like to be your sister, brother, dad, and mother too. Pretty baby, pretty baby. Won't you come and let me rock you in my cradle of love? And we'll cuddle all the time. Oh, 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 I love the baby, and it might as well be you. Pretty baby of mine, I must love a pretty baby, and it might as well be you. Pretty baby, pretty baby. Pretty baby, pretty baby. Won't you come and let me rock you in my cradle of love, and we'll cuddle all the time. Oh, what a loving baby, and it might as well be you. Beautiful baby of mine, oh my, everybody loves a baby, that's why I'm in love with you. Pretty baby of mine, and I'd like to be your sister, daddy, mother too, pretty baby. Pretty baby, won't you come and let me rock you in my cradle of love, and we'll cuddle all the time. Oh, I want a loving baby. Well, I could be your loving baby. Well, could you love a sort of maybe? Oh, I've got plenty of love in me, baby. Oh, bad, pretty little baby of mine. Well, Gracie, we'll reach the courthouse in two minutes. Is everything clear in your mind? Yeah, except one thing. What's that? What's the character witness? Gracie, look. If you were on trial and I'd get up in court and say that you're intelligent, considerate, and a conscientious girl, a person who has a keen sense of responsibility, whose brilliance is matched only by her beauty, why would I say that? Well, because you're under oath and you've got to tell the truth. <laughs> I don't know. I think I'm going out of my mind. Hey, hey, look out for that car, George. What car? <laughs> that one. <laughs> Gee, 
George, that was your fault. The man's getting out of his car. I know, but leave it to me, Artie. I'll just start hollering and scare him to death. <clears throat> hey, mister! He looks half your size. Hey, Duke! He's standing up now. Look, he's twice your size. Now, listen, chum. Now, uh, listen here, you. You drivers like you shouldn't be allowed on the street driving through a safety zone. Don't you know the traffic rules? Do you know what the single white line is for? Yeah, that's for trucks to follow. What's the double white line for? That's for pleasure cars to follow. What are the zigzag lines for? That's what the Los Angeles drivers follow. <laughs> Evidently, you don't know how to drive a car. My dear senor, you don't know how to drive a car? No. Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> you mean ridiculous. <laughs> Come on, I'm in a hurry. Out of my way. Everybody, I'm going to step on it. Say, George, when you started the car, you bumped into him. Yeah, and he's got your license number. He has? Yeah, on the seat of his pants. <laughs> of... Oh, I can't understand it. My case was supposed to have started a half an hour ago, and the judge isn't here yet. Hey, bailiff. What happened to the judge? He's back there ranting and raving. I've never seen him so mad. How do you like that? I'm being sued for $200,000 and he's mad. What happened? Well, on his way to the courthouse, some crazy driver ran into him. <laughs> this is a fine thing. Some dopey driver running into Oh. George fainted. Well, what's the matter with him? Well, he's suffering from a run-down condition. He's run down? No, the judge was. Oh. 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 What happened? Now I remember. My case. The accident. The judge. Say, bailiff, don't tell me he's the judge who's sitting today. Yes, he's on the bench. He may be on the bench, but I'll bet he's not sitting. <laughs> <laughs> he's probably sore about something, if <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> I think I know what you mean. Look, I can't appear before this judge. As soon as he sees me, I'm a dead duck. Well, George, why don't you just comb your hair in front of your eyes? Then he won't recognize you. Uh, Senor Burns, nothing would help you with that thick head of hair. Leave my hair out of it. All right. Nothing will help you with that thick head. <laughs> Here's an idea. Why don't you comb your eyebrows down over your face? Comb my eyebrows down over my face? That's silly. Who the judge think I am? John L. Lewis. John L. Lewis? Oh, a Labor Day joke. I see what you mean. I wonder why I'll get on. I wonder if things like this happen to other people. Thank you.
wonder what's keeping the judge. I hear he was in an automobile accident. Marie, which one is George Burns? I don't know. Uh, pardon me, but if you'll allow a sound man. You see that handsome fellow next to the old man? Yeah. Well, the old man is George Burns. <laughs> Gracie, the judge will be here any minute. Now, do you know what a character witness is? No. No? A character witness is a party that says nice things about another party. Oh, let me see. Can't be the Republicans and Democrats. <laughs> Look, Gracie, let's... Pardon me, are you Gracie Allen on the radio? Mm-hmm. I'm Gracie Allen here, too. Well, that charming young man who always talks about Span, is he here in court, too? Uh, pardon me, I couldn't help overhearing your conversation, madam, and uh, thank you very much. You know, tomorrow, millions of American youngsters go back to school. Oh, aren't you going to talk about Span? Give them time, madam. <laughs> well, when school opens, times will be busy, so we want to give you this suggestion about school lunches. Spam? Right, Spam. Whether you pack a lunch or the children run home at noon, you'll make a hit with Spam, S-P-A-M. Youngsters love this delicious meat, the grand flavor, the satisfying taste. Spam keeps without refrigeration, is all ready to eat as soon as you open the can, and is easy to use in dozens of time-saving ways. But put plain Spamwiches in the school lunch box or serve sliced Spam with hot stewed tomatoes, bread, butter, and milk, a swell school lunch at home. Isn't he uh, wonderful? Yes, he's a little dreamboat. <laughs> oh, and here's one more very important thing. Besides taste, you want quality. So you may know exactly what you're getting. Hormel is proud to put on the label of the Spam can this sentence. Pork shoulder meat with ham meat added. That's your guarantee of goodness and quality. For Spam is a perfect blend of these two choice cuts. So solve your school lunch problems with food that's nourishing, tasty, satisfying, and good. Ask your food dealer for Spam, S-P-A-M, when you shop tomorrow. Try the easy recipes on the label and discover how this delicious meat solves mealtime problems in a hurry. I think this young man is the best announcer on the radio. And furthermore, I think you should give him a raise. I'll consider it, madam. Goodbye, Mr. Burns. Goodbye, madam. Goodbye, bud. Goodbye, mother. <laughs> Slice it, dice it, fry it, bake it, cold or hot, spam hits the spot. Everybody rise. <coughs> Court now in session. His Honor Judge Hammond presiding. First case in the docket, breach of contract suit. L.C. Tranifast versus... Charge Nathaniel Borden's alias Poopsie. <laughs> Are both sides ready? Plaintiff is ready. I represent Elsie Trotterfash, Your Honor. George, you better cover up your face. If the judge finds out who you are, you'll lose the case. If he covers up his face, it'll be even worse. What do you mean? He'll get him for concealing a deadly weapon. <laughs> I know what I'll do. I'll just hold my head down. Come, 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 come. Now you're wasting the court's time. Uh, will the defense speak up? Well, Your Honor, I'm George Burns, and I'm defending my own case. Young man, when you speak to me, stand up straight and look at me, look straight at me. Well, Your Honor, I'm down here tying my shoelace. Oh, never do that, young man. This morning, I bent down to tie a shoelace, and a car hit me right in the safety zone. <laughs> well, that's, that's life, I guess. Uh, why, the fellow who was driving that car must have been blind. Blind? He hit you, didn't he? <laughs> Quiet, Gracie. Well, George, I'm not going to let anybody say you're blind and get away with it. Gracie. I think he's got a lot of the whole thing. Aha! To... Turn around, young man. So you're the fellow who hit me in the safety zone. Hmm, that's George. Cold or hot, he hits the spot. <laughs> Gracie, please. You see, it wasn't my car, Your Honor. It was the car that resembled my car. Well, oh, maybe the judge was struck by the resemblance. <laughs> <laughs> you see, Your Honor, what... Silence. Miss Calipas? So this is the man you're suing. That's right, Your Honor. <laughs> well, well, let's get on with the case. And uh, you're suing him for $300,000. No, Your Honor, $200,000. Such a small sum. <laughs> Your Honor, you're not going to let a little thing like being hit in the safety zone affect my case. Mr. Burns, this is a court of law. What transpires between myself and yourself will absolutely have no bearing on the case whatsoever. I assure you, you will have a fair, unbiased, impartial trial. <laughs> now, Senor Judge, you cannot do that to Senor Burns. A finer man shouldn't leave. <laughs> Stop helping me, Senor Lane. Take it easy, Senor Burns. You'll strain your tinsels. Tinsels? Si. You mean tonsils. Tinsel is something that's covered with guilt. 
You don't need no sense. <laughs> Gracie, I can see I haven't got a leg to stand uh, on. Just leave it to me. Look, Gracie, will you stay now, on? Now, I want to testify for George Burns. Oh. Are you prepared to say that George Burns is innocent? Yes. I never told a lie in my life, and all I want is a chance. <laughs> Gracie, will you come back here and... Silence! Come... Let's get on with this trial. The case for uh, Elsie Talapas versus George uh, Poopsie Burns. Will the jury stand up and call out their names? Joe Talapas. Tom Talapas. Al Talapas. Jimmy Talapas. Adam Talapas. Junior Talapas. Arthur Talapas. And Clarence Talapas. <laughs> well, that's, that's only 11. You there in the corner. What's your name? Willie Barnes. <laughs> Poopsie, you're trying to fix the jury, eh? Now, listen, Judge, I don't even... Silence, silence! Quiet or I'll have you fined $100 for contempt of court. $100? Huh. That doesn't begin to show your contempt for this court, does it, George? I see. Will you stop? Mr. Burns, is it true that you took Elsie Talavest to the beach and played piggyback with her? And well, nobody. And put her on the radio? Uh, you did? Next witness. But, Your Honor, I now... Silence! <laughs> What a trial. Programs, programs, get your programs. Can't tell the judge from the criminal without a program. <laughs> I object. Who are you? Artie Shaw. And what are you objecting to? I haven't had a line for ten minutes. <laughs> Your Honor, I'll prove my innocence. Gracie, will you take the stand? All right. Now, <clears throat> what's your name? Gracie L. Allen. What's the L for? Oh, please, George, watch your language. <laughs> Where were you born? San Francisco. Before the fire? On the back of the piano. <laughs> Listen, Gracie... You know what my father said when I was born? I object! You guessed it. <laughs> now, will you tell the court, Miss Allen, have I ever promised Elsie Tralifaz to make her my partner and put her on the radio? I don't remember. You don't remember what? I don't remember what you told me to say. <laughs> but did I ever promise to put Elsie Trellifass on the radio? I don't know. Artie, did I promise to put Elsie Trellifass on the radio? I don't know. Canada Drive pays out ten dollars in the set of the encyclopedias to Mrs. Walter Murphy who sent in that question. <laughs> Uh, isn't there anybody in this court who can say one nice word about me? Mr. Burns, if you'll allow a sound man. Well, with pleasure. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, opposing counsel and your honor. Well, now you'll hear some stuff. You cannot try Mr. Burns as you would an ordinary layman. Well, Actors are different from most people, and therefore they cannot be adjudged by the same standards. And what makes you think Mr. Burns is an actor? Your honor, every performer has something that endears him to the public. Well, he wouldn't know that, you see. Eddie Cantor makes people laugh with his pop eyes. I've got some stuff, too. Charlie Chaplin gets laughs with his wistful look. That's right. Fred Allen gets laughs with his nasal twang. And what does Mr. Burns have that makes people laugh? Gracie Allen. <laughs> well, this is fine. If I had my... Silence! Oh. Gentlemen of the jury, you have heard all the evidence. All the evidence? I object, Your Honor. I have something to say that will prove my complete innocence. And then he... Out of order! Oh. Silence! <laughs> Gentlemen of the jury, you have heard all the evidence in this case. I want you to go to the jury room now and weigh each bit of testimony very, very carefully and come back with an impartial verdict of guilty. <laughs> Help! I'm being framed! Thanks, Judge. Oh, that's all right, Mrs. Troutfast. I'll see you again tonight. Oh, well, just a minute, just a minute. Now, before this thing goes too far, I want to warn Elsie Troutfast right now that if she doesn't drop this lawsuit against George Burns, I'll tell all about her being out with Johnny Hyde. Oh, no, no, not that. I'll drop the suit and pay all the costs, but please, please don't tell them about Johnny Hyde. You, my client, you knew Johnny Hyde? She knew Johnny Hyde? She knew Johnny Hyde. She was out with Johnny Hyde. Johnny Hyde? She knew Johnny Hyde? She knew Johnny Hyde? Johnny Hyde? Johnny Hyde? Johnny Hyde! The George Burns acquitted! And the paper, Elsie Trellifan's drop suit admits knowing Johnny Hyde! I see you were simply marvelous. 
You saved me $200,000, and I certainly appreciate it. But there's one thing I'd like to know. What's that? Who's Johnny Hyde? Who's Johnny Hyde? Yes. Who's Johnny Hyde? Who's Johnny Hyde? Well, who is he? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Remember, mothers, school starts tomorrow, as if you didn't know, and you're going to have to have a lot of ideas for lunches. Why not let Spam do the work? Youngsters love this delicious meat, and you can bet your life Spam will satisfy husky appetites. You'll like the way Spam saves kitchen time, too. It keeps without refrigeration, is all ready to eat as soon as you open the Spam can. In lunch boxes or on the table at noon, Spam is wholesome, nourishing food for school youngsters. Ask for Spam, S-P-A-M, when you shop tomorrow and try the easy recipes on the label. Well, thanks, bud. Well, Gracie, say good night. Good night. Well, come on, I'll take you home. Oh, George, I can't. I've just had a summons. A summons? Oh, Gracie. Coming, Judgey Wudgey. I'll be right there. Good night, George. Good night, folks. <laughs> Listen again next Monday night, same time, same station, for George Burns and Gracie Allen, with Artie Shaw and his orchestra and the Smoothies, brought to you by Hormel and Spam. Until then, this is Bud Heaston reminding you to remember that cold or hot, Spam hits the spot. Have you tried Hormel Chili Con Carne? You may think you don't like chili, but Chili Con Carne, the way Hormel makes it, is different and everybody likes it. Double your money back if you don't like it. Try Hormel Chili Con Carne tomorrow. This is the National Broadcasting Company. Oh.